If you're by yourself sometimes, this show is just for you. What it's all about is how you can play it safe when you're home on your own. We're going to be doing a bunch of skits to show you exactly what we mean. And these are the kids in the cast. Hi, I'm Allison. I'm Sunny. My name's Mike. And I'm Wendy. Let's start off with a preview of what you're going to be seeing. We'll start off with some new skits to show you the safest way to get into the house when no one's home. Yeah, you'll see the best places to keep your key and some places not to keep it. And what to do if you lose your key. We'll show you some fun ways to spend your time when you're home alone. Stuff to do so you don't feel bored or lonely. And some stuff you shouldn't do when you're home alone, like cooking. And then I get to play a bad guy, a stranger who tries all kinds of tricks to get the kids to let him in when they're home alone. We're not going to let you in. Well, good for you, because you shouldn't. Another important thing we'll show you is how to handle emergencies. Yeah, like if the plumbing goes bad and suddenly you got a lake in your bathroom. Or if there's a fire in your house. At the end of the show, we'll put it all together. You'll see how to make a plan with your mom and dad that will help you remember everything we're going to show you. Ready? Then let's get started. Okay. This pocket. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, must have fallen out sometime during the day. Well, it's pretty easy to lose a key that way. Or if you're going into your pocket to get something else, your key can fall out and you don't even notice it. So where can you keep your key instead? Well, the best place to keep your key is on a string around your neck, like this. Well, I have a big front door. But anyway, when you keep the key on a string like this, under your shirt or your blouse, it's safe and it's out of sight. You can also keep it on the keychain attached to your belt loop. Like this. And to keep it out of sight, you put it on a belt loop near your pocket and tuck it in. Whichever way you do it, keep it safe and secure. And that means never letting anyone else borrow it. Well, I'll keep it around my neck from now on. But I guess I'll never find the key I lost. Maybe I should have put my name and address on it. That way, if someone found it, they could have returned it. And what if the person who found it was a burglar? Gee, then he'd know right where to come. And he could use the key to get in and steal everything. Never mind. Well, don't worry about it. You know what to do next time you lose your key. But for now, how are you going to get into the house? Oh, well, that's no problem. See, I've lost my key before, so we decided how to spare in case it happened again. Wait a minute. What if someone else finds a spare key? Nah, we're too sneaky. Oh. I bet you and I are just as sneaky as Sonny is. You go first. Take a good look at the area around the door. Where do you think the key may be hidden? Okay, now it's my turn. I'm going to pretend like I'm a burglar. Now, you know in the comics, all burglars dress like this, but not in real life. Because if they did, then the people would say, hey, there's a burglar, let's arrest him. But this burglar costume is just for the skit. If this were a killer's household, where would they hide the spirit key? Well, the first place I would look is the mailbox. Bingo. Okay, yeah, that was just a lucky guess. I have other hiding places. Okay, but what if it wasn't there? Burglars know all the hiding places. Okay, so hiding key isn't such a hot idea. So if you do lose your key, you're just stuck? I mean, do you have to wait until someone else comes home? Well, not necessarily. A better idea is to take the spare key to a friend's house or a neighbor's house. You know, someone like your contact person. Someone who's usually home when you get home. So if you lose your key, you can always go there and pick up a spare. Or if you need help and you can't reach your parents, you have someone to call. Hey, that's a great idea. My grandma, she doesn't live far away, and we can leave a spare key with her. There you go. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't notice this before. Put the windows open. I can just climb in. Bad idea. Oh, you startled me. Yes, Sonny. Whenever you come home and the windows open or the doors open, or if anything is strange, you don't go in. Because someone who does not belong in your house may be in there. So what you do, you go to a neighbor's house. Or you go to a payphone and you call the police. Okay, sure. 
Now, I think I got all this. Let's see. Now, uh, I keep my key out of sight on a string around my neck or on a chain around my belt loop. I don't lend it to anybody. I don't put my name and address on it. And we don't hide a spare, but we do leave one with my contact person who's likely to be home when I get home. Exactly. Now can I go in? Sure. Sonny. Yeah? Now we've been talking about how important it is to keep people out of the house when you're not home. But it's just as important to lock the door behind you. You don't want anyone who does not belong in your house just walking in, do you? No, I sure don't. Thanks for the reminder. No problem. But I'm glad I don't have to play a burglar anymore. You know, crime doesn't pay. But being on TV, yeah, that pays. My victim smiles, but not for long. I pack plaque in every crack so that every tooth will be covered with bacteria. <laughs> Go ahead, plaque demon, because everybody knows how to clean plaque from between his teeth. Lost! I'm lost! Brush and floss every day, if you want to keep smiling. Everybody knows that. Ah! This message has been brought to you in a spirit of friendship by this station and your local dental society. The simple way to get the calcium you need has always been the natural way, from dairy foods. Three servings from a variety of dairy foods can give an adult the 800 milligrams of calcium you need every day. Natural calcium. What could be simpler than that? Dairy calcium. Calcium the way nature intended. I started smoking when I was 14, and I was always very afraid to try to quit in case I failed. And so, for many years, I didn't. Then I got pregnant, and I kept thinking I really should give it up. My body was the keeper of life and my baby's life. Therefore, if I respected life, I had to not poison my body. I stopped smoking. I have enjoyed every minute I've saved not smoking. Now, let's say you've gotten home and you're alone. Now, I know exactly what that's like, because when I was a kid, both of my parents worked, and I came back home to an empty house. Now, I know they would have rather been there with me, but they had to earn a living. And sometimes, especially when you're younger, it can get boring or even a little scary to be by yourself. But there are ways to get around that. Let's get our other experts back in here. Chop, chop, come on. Now, what do you need to keep from being bored or lonely when you're by yourself? I like to watch TV. I play my records and listen to the radio. Wait a minute. What about homework? Uh, well, I just had to ask that because it is in the script. Well, my mom does like me to do my homework first thing. But after that, I read a book or I do a jigsaw puzzle. Don't the rest of you have to do chores? My mom always leaves me a list. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> you <whoa. laughs> Okay, okay. What else do you do? Well, um... When I get home from school, I'm hungry. I eat a snack. Hey, me too. Yeah, me too. Now, if you're lucky, your mom or your dad or whoever you live with will have some goodies for you to munch on. Or there should be a bowl of fresh fruit around. Whoa. Good catch, Wendy. Now, one thing that's easy to make is a sandwich. All right, peanut butter and jelly is the best. I like ham and cheese. Yeah, or a mashed potato and ketchup sandwich. Oh, <laughs> What can I tell you? Gourmet. <laughs> yeah, well, here's one thing to stay away from when you're making things in the kitchen by yourself. Now, if you need to use a knife to spread butter or mustard or mashed potatoes and ketchup, you should use a butter knife. Or better yet, use a spoon. One thing you should also stay away from is the stove or the oven when your parents are not around. Why do you think you should stay away from this? Because you could burn yourself. If you spill boiling water on yourself, it can give you a real bad burn. Or if you touch a hot pot. You could even start a fire. Yeah, it happens all the time. These things are dangerous. So for safety's sake, no using the stove or the oven when adults aren't around. That's all right. I like sandwiches better anyway. <laughs> oh, I can see why. I know who you are. You're Louise from Sesame Street. Yes, and who are you? 
We're Daisy Girl Scouts. These are the newest Girl Scouts, Daisy Girl Scouts. They make things and go places and have lots of fun. If you're five years old or in kindergarten, you could be a Daisy Girl Scout too. Why don't you ask your mom and dad to call the Girl Scouts in your town? The number's in the phone book. Yeah, I love being a Daisy Girl Scout. Look, Shamu! Ahoy, boaters! Have you got your life jackets? Just going to get them, Shamu! Stay there, we'll get them for you! Two life jackets on the double! Shamu says, never go near the water without an approved flotation device. Most people who drown never intended to go in the water in the first place. Thanks, Shamu! Boy, my favorite class is lunch. I'm buying some chocolate layer cake, cherry pie, cookies, and soda pop. Goodness abominable. Sweets are nice once in a while, but you can't live on them. A balanced meal can taste good, too. Well, maybe you're right. I'll get the hot lunch. I'm having a salad, soup, milk, and this lovely orange. Do, 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 abominable, do, what are you doing? Balancing my meal. Do, uh, do, a genie consumer tip from your Better Business Bureau. You are the lucky family. Tonight, you'll have the same dinner served in some of the most exotic countries of the world. And it's beef teriyaki. Wow! No. How about shrimp curry? Great! No. Here's your treat. Plain rice. That's lucky. Yes, because you're part of one-third of the world's people who will not go hungry today. Find out what your church, synagogue, and service organizations are doing about world hunger. The way we live does make a difference. Okay, okay, okay. Now, let's say you're home alone, doing the things we talked about. Watching television, reading, playing games, maybe doing homework. Oh. Well, and suddenly the doorbell rings, or there's a knock at the door. Quick, what do you do? Don't, Don't let, let strangers in. in. Don't let strangers in. Okay, that's right. But sometimes they can be pretty sneaky. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> Now, I'm going to try to trick the kids into letting me in. Now, each time I do it, try and imagine what you would say if somebody came to your door. Here we go. Knock, knock. It's there. Auto. Auto who? Automobile. Yeah, that's it. My car broke down. Will you please let me use your phone? No, I'm sorry. Try somewhere else. But please, it would only take a minute. No, I'm sorry. There's a payphone down the street. Oh, I have to go help my mother now. Goodbye. Hello, hello, are you there? That's good, Mike. If someone tells you they need to use your phone, politely tell them no. And don't mention that you're all by yourself. Uh, Malcolm? Yeah, Mike. Well, I know that you're pretending to be a sneaky person trying to get in, but what if it was somebody who really does need to use the phone? I'm going to feel bad turning them away. Well, you shouldn't. Because you're just doing the safest thing. And if you politely say no, they're going to go next door or go somewhere else where an adult can't help them. Okay. Okay. Now let me try a different approach. See what you think you'd say if somebody came to the door and said this. Knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Don't cry. I'm here to fix the water heater. I don't think it's broken. Well, it needs to be checked. Your mother called me and asked me to come by. So if you just let me in, I'll show you what I need to do. You'll have to wait while I check with my mother. Sonny said exactly the right thing. If someone tells you that your mom and dad told them to fix something, call your mom and dad to check. Malcolm, what if she can't reach them? I live with my mom, and she's a real estate agent. A lot of the time, she's away from her office. Well, remember when we said you should leave a spare key with your contact person? Then call your contact person. Yeah, that should work most of the time, but what if something comes up and even your contact person isn't home? Well, then it's a good idea to have a second contact person to call. But if you can't reach anyone, you can always call the police. Explain to them how old you are, tell them that you're home alone, and tell them what your problem is. They should be able to help you. Got it. Thanks. No problem. I got a few more tricks up my sleeve. Now, here's a real tough one. Put yourself in Wendy's place. What if someone came to your door and said something like this? Knock, knock. Who's there? I don't have time for games. Your mother's been in an accident at work, and I'm supposed to come and pick you up. So open the door, and I'll take you to the hospital to see her. 
Okay, hold, hold it. it! What if he's lying? I was lying, Wendy. I was trying to trick you into letting me in the door. But that's mean. Well, I know that. Most people are nice, but then there are some mean ones. Just to be safe, what should you have done? Not let him in. Right. Now, of course, you would have been worried about your mother, so what else could you have done? Could I call her at work? Right, that's a good idea. And the people there would tell me whether she's really been hurt. That's right. And if you couldn't get through to them, you could always call your contact person or your backup person. And if that didn't work, you know you can always call the police and they can help you find out about your mother. I'll remember. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm going to give it one last try. This one's really sneaky. Now let's see how Allison reacts and think about how you would react, okay? Knock, knock. Who's there? Hap. Hap who? Happy birthday. It's not my birthday. Oh, well, it must be, because I'm a delivery person, and I have this beautiful present to deliver to you. Open the door, please. A present for me? Allison! All oh, right, all right. Um, you can't come in. Please leave the box with the neighbor. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I can't do that. You have to sign for it. So if you just open the door... What's the matter? Are you alone? Uh, well, don't tell strangers you're alone, Allison. It's none of their business. Um, my mom can't come to the door right now. Goodbye. That was good. Allison said what she had to say, and then she just said goodbye and left. You don't need to get into a long conversation with someone who comes to your door. Remember, most people are not out to trick you or to hurt you. But it's always better to be safe than sorry, and that's why you shouldn't let anyone in. If you have any questions, call your mom or your dad, or your contact person. Or if you can't reach anyone else and there's a problem, call the police. When you've got people you can call for help, you're not really alone. Now there's one other way that someone can try to trick you, and that's on the phone. You see, if someone tries to call you and they say, well, rather than talking about it, let me show you what I mean. Hello? Hi. Let me speak to your mother, please. Uh, she's not here. Well, then, can I speak to your father, please? He's not here either. Oh, well, is there any adult there? No. See, my mom's not here. She's working. Mike, what are you doing? I just told them the truth. We're not supposed to tell strangers we're alone. It's just safer not to. Oh, yeah. Sorry. But I hate to lie to people. I bet Mike can think of a better way to handle this call without lying and without telling a stranger things that are none of his business. Let's try it again, the right way. Hello? Hi. Let me speak to your mother, please. She can't come to the phone right now. Would you like to leave your number and I'll have you call you back? Well, can I talk to your father, please? No, but if you'd like to leave your number, I'll have someone call you back. Oh, I get it. You're there by yourself, right? My mom can't come to the phone right now. Would you like to leave your number? Never mind. Way to go, Mike. You weren't rude, but you got the message across. Yeah, and I didn't even have to lie. It's true my mom can't come to the phone right now, because she's at work. <laughs> Perfect, Mike. <laughs> you don't have to let strangers into your house through the front door, and you don't have to let them into the phone either. No need to be rude, but don't tell them you're by yourself. Just say you'll take down their number and have someone call them back. Easy as that. And if they want to keep talking or keep asking you questions, just tell them you have to go and hang up. I'm Woodsy Owl, with a bird's eye view of America's beautiful forests and campgrounds. But look what happens when grown-ups and kids don't give a hoot about pollution. But Woodsy, what can we do about litter? And then just spread the word. Give a hoot. Don't pollute. And if you see litter, please pick it up. Because if you don't give a hoot, who will? In the city or in the woods, please keep America looking good. Hoot, hoot. Hey. 23 million Americans have it. And half of them don't even know it. What is it? High blood pressure. Are you one of the 23 million? If you don't know, perform a death-defying act and reduce your risk of stroke or heart attack. Have your blood pressure checked. A message from the American Heart Association. Ah, oh, the payroll savings plan. Make savings easy as... 
Take stock in America. Buy bonds. careless second with a match, and America the beautiful becomes America the ugly. Please, help prevent forest fires. Now we're going to see what you should do in case of an emergency. Um, Malcolm, how come we're mostly talking about stuff that can go wrong? I mean, being on your own isn't that bad, is it? <laughs> well, no. Most of the time, everything's going to go fine. When things are going well, knowing what to do is hardly the problem. But if things ever do go wrong, people, kids and adults alike, tend to panic. So it's always a good idea to be prepared and practice, just in case. Then you'll feel better about being alone, too. Well, maybe. But I don't think I'll ever have any emergencies. You don't think you'll ever have any emergencies? Not really. Oh, excuse me, I'd like to wash my hands. Sure. <laughs> One kind of an emergency is when something goes wrong with the plumbing. If the toilet is overflowing or if the faucet starts spewing out water, you need to know how to turn the water off. Your uh, parents should show you in advance where the shutoff valves are and help you practice how to turn them off. Here, <laughs> let's take a look. Most kitchen and bathroom sinks have valves like this. You see, they cut off the water. Now, there's one on the toilet, too, right here, in case the toilet overflows. Now, when you've turned off the water, you can call your parents or your contact person to let them know exactly what's happened. And then, this is Allison's favorite part, you can start cleaning up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Another emergency is when you smell gas. If you have a gas stove or a gas heater, of course, the first thing you should do is open all the windows and all the doors and then leave the house. You go to a safe place, then you call the gas company and you tell them you smell gas. They'll come and take care of it right away. Let's see, we got water leaking from the faucets, water leaking from the toilet, gas leaking from the stove or the heaters. That's all the things that could go wrong. Nothing else could go wrong. Really? Well, I see what you mean. Actually, I don't see anything, but I know what you mean. Well, good. You know, in case of a blackout, it's always a good idea to have a flashlight in every room. And of course, know where it is. Flashlights are much safer than candles. Ah, for once, I'm way ahead of you. We do have lots of flashlights, and I know where they are. Good. Oh, here's one. Ah, I'll just turn it on and... Uh... Malcolm? Yes, honey? When the lights come back on, remind me to put new batteries into the flashlight. <laughs> you got it. How come the lights go out? Well, usually it's a problem at the power company, or a power line has been blown down by a storm or in an accident. But when the power company has a fix, the lights come on by themselves again. Well, what if the problem's in our house? I mean, should we go down to the fuse box and fix it there? No. You see, the fuse boxes can be very dangerous. But if you keep flashlights handy... With good batteries. Right, with good batteries. Then you have enough light to see the phone and call your, your mom or your dad or your contact person. And stay away from candles, huh? <laughs> right. Because having no power is enough of an emergency. But you don't want to start a fire either. Hey, I know another kind of emergency. Oh, yeah? What's that? If somebody gets hurt. Hey, that's a very important emergency. They know there are different levels of being hurt. If you scrape your knee or if you get a little cut, you can probably take care of that yourself. But you should know where to find this. A first aid kit. Now, you ask your parents to make sure there's one of these in the house. And you should know where to find it and also how to use it. What if somebody's really hurt? Well, if someone's really hurt, you have to get help. So you would call... Your, your parents or your contact person. Right, or a doctor or a police. And you should also have a list of phone numbers right by the phone. All right, here's the list we keep by our phone. See? This is my mom's work number. This is my dad's work number. This is the number of our contact person, Mrs. Lee. She's really nice. And this is the police number, the fire department. And this is Dr. Carter. He took out my tonsils, but he's okay. And this is the gas company. And this is the number of our backup contact person, just in case. Well, that's a good list. What's this number scribbled at the bottom? Oh, that's the number my mom calls when she orders pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good number. 
<laughs> now let's look at one more emergency. Probably the scariest one. A fire. What do you do if there's a fire in your house? It's called the fire department? Right. But from where? Uh, the living room? Wrong. Now while you're on the phone, the fire can spread and trap you inside. Now if you ever have a fire, you get out as fast as you can. You talk about the best escape routes with your mom and your dad in case there is a fire. And that's especially important if you live upstairs. And then you have a practice drill every few months so you don't forget where the fire escapes are. And in a fire, you get out as quick as you can, you go to a safe place, and you call the fire department from there. And tell your neighbors so that they'll know too. You got it. Good nutrition is essential to good health, including healthy teeth and gums. That's why I make sure Grandma and I eat a balanced diet every day. That means four servings of fruits and vegetables, four servings of breads and cereals, three servings of milk and dairy products, two servings of meat and fish. Everyone needs a balanced diet. Even Grandma wolves. <laughs> a public service message from the American Dental Association. America's become cleaner thanks to something called the Clean Community System. Changing the way people think about trash and pollution, the Clean Community System makes a city so clean, the citizens simply refuse to let it get dirty again. But though many communities are part of the system, many more aren't. If yours isn't, write for this free booklet. With the Clean Community System, our whole country can be a cleaner place to live in. You know, you're doing a great job, but you're not using all your assets. With a body like that, you can go places. Sexual harassment makes you feel like less of a person. For help and hotline numbers, ask for the Stop Sexual Harassment booklet at your public library. Be a little more sexy. Hey, we're talking about your job here. No, we're talking about sexual harassment here, and I don't have to take it. Sexual harassment violates you, and it violates the law talking about calling people in case of an emergency. Now let's see how you do that. Aw, oh, come on, Malcolm. We've all used the phone before. What's the big deal? You dial the number and talk to the person on the other end of the line. Yeah, well, it's a lot easier when you're calling your friend to talk about your boyfriend or talk about what happened in school. But in an emergency, you're going to be upset and it's going to be a lot harder. Tell you what, I'll be Officer Warner. You call me and tell me that your brother broke his leg. Your brother's in the other room. His leg's broken, he's crying, and there's blood. Okay, okay. Don't tell me anymore. Okay. I'm on duty. Go ahead, Allison. My brother broke his leg, and I think he's your real bad. Can you come help? Okay, where do you live? Uh, on Elm Street. Where on Elm Street? On the corner. I mean, what's your number? Phone number? No, the street number. I'd hate to be her brother during all this. The street number is, uh, 9815 Elm Street. No, 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 no. Um, uh, 9518. No, oh, gee. Okay, Allison, calm down. You see what I mean? Yeah. No, someone's going to help you. They need to know who you are, what their problem is, and where you are. Right, but what if you get mixed up because you're upset? I mean, my poor brother's in the next room with a broken leg. He's crying. Well, remember the phone list. At the bottom of the list is the name and the address. So if you get mixed up, you can always read this off to the person on the other end of the line. Every home should have this. Right, now I remember. Could we try this call again? Sure. Okay. Officer Warner, at your service. Hi, my name is Allison Cochran. My brother is hurt. I think he broke his leg. I live at 9185 Elm Street. Please send help. We'll send the paramedics right away. Thanks. Bye. Wait. Allison, that was good, but don't hang up yet. The person she's calling may need to double-check the information she's given, or he may have other questions, or he may be able to give her instructions about what to do until help arrives. Got it. We've given you a lot of information, and now it's time to put it all together into a Home Alone plan. Now, that's a plan you and your parents come up with that covers all the stuff we've been talking about and one that works just for you. Young man, let's see if you've got the plan straight. 
I guess she's supposed to be my mother. That's right, and don't you forget it. Got your keys on? Sure, Dad. I keep it out of sight here around my neck, and I never lend it to anyone either. But what if you do lose it? Then I go to my contact person. That's our neighbor, Mrs. Ingalls. She's got a spare key, and if she's not home, I can go to my backup contact person, Aunt Lizzie. She has a key, too. What if you come home and the door's open or a window's open? If everything isn't the way it should be, I don't go in. There may be a burglar or someone inside, so I will go to our neighbor's Ms. Ingalls. And from there, I'll call the police. All right, good. But what do you do when you're home alone? Why, when I was a boy, I had to shovel the snow, clean the barn, fix the roof. Yes, dear, let him answer. First, I have a snack. I don't use any sharp knives, and I don't use a stove because they're too dangerous. And then I do my chores, and I do my homework, and then I have fun watching TV, reading, or listening to the stereo. I don't know what he sees in that rock and roll music. Neither do I. Why, in my day, we had good music. That's just loud. <coughs> uh, yes. And what about strangers, son? I don't let strangers in. If they need help, I ask them to go somewhere else. If they want something else, I tell them to call you or my contact person. And I don't tell strangers that I'm home alone. And what about when strangers call on the telephone? Ha! I doubt any strangers can get through on the phone with the amount of time he spends talking to his girlfriend. Dad, you're embarrassing me. Anyway, if a stranger calls, I offer to take down a number and have you call him back. And I don't tell him that I'm all by myself. I just say you can't come to the phone right now. And if I need to, I'll call you, my contact person, or the police. That's my son. But what about emergencies? Well, if there's a water leak, you show me how to turn it off. And I know where we keep the flashlight in case the lights go out. That's right. And if there's one thing I've learned in life, it's that you have to check the batteries. Right, Dad. If there's a gas leak or a fire, I get out as quick as I can. We practice all the fire exits so I know how to get out even if the front door is blocked by the fire. And then when I'm in the safe place, I'll call the fire department or the gas company. Very good, son. And if I hurt myself, I know where the first aid kit is so I can use a bandit or whatever. But if it's more serious than that, I call the doctor or the police. How do you know all these numbers? From the phone list we keep by the phone. It has your number on it, uh, your work number, mom's work number, Mrs. Engel's number, the doctor's number, the police number, the gas company number, and the fire emergency number. It even has our own address and our phone number on it, so I won't get mixed up. Right. And are you bored or scared when you're home by yourself? No, because I always have lots of things to do. And I don't really feel bored because I know with a home alone plan, I'm ready for anything. And if something goes wrong, I know what to do and who to call. I'm proud of this kid. I think we've done a heck of a job bringing him up. Wouldn't surprise me if he grew up to be a TV star. Yes, he takes after me. <laughs> Wait a minute, you guys. <laughs> That's enough. That Sonny Allison, come on out, please. Oh, my goodness. Now, you all know about being on your own. Safe. But the key is coming up with your own home alone plan that works for you. Now that's something you should do with your parents. They'll help you make up a phone list and pick good contact people. They will show you where the water turnoff valves are in your house and all the things that we've talked about. Now once you've done that, it won't be our home alone plan, it'll be yours. And once a month or so, watch this tape and practice the things we talked about. Thanks for watching. Sonny, get your phone list. Why, is there an emergency? Well, no, but since your mom's going to be home soon, I thought we would get her to order some pizza. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, bye, and bye. be safe. Bye, bye. 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 For a videotape or transcript of this program, send $4 to How to Succeed, Parent Communications, 2001 Glen Parkway, Batavia, Ohio 45103.